As a final, and rather conventional sort of example of a linear system, consider the following system of masses and springs, something that you might see in a basic physics class and a mechanics class. You've got a collection of linear springs that are connecting masses that uh, can slide or move around. Then something called Hooke's Law tells you how the displacements, in this case u1 up through u3, are related to the forces with which you, you, you pull on these guys, F1, F2, F3, in terms of the arrangements of the springs and the spring constants kappa 1 up through kappa 4. There is a system of linear equations that one can write down that if you put it in the form of Ax equals b, where x is the displacements, u1, u2, u3, uh, b is the forces, F1, F2, F3, the matrix A is composed of various combinations of these spring constants, the kappa sub i's. Then this linear system, Ax equals b, can tell you how to set things up so that you can solve for the displacements as a function of the forces and the spring constants. Now maybe you've seen this in physics class, maybe you haven't, doesn't matter. Again, the idea, another linear system. And well, okay, we got another linear system and lots of examples of linear systems, but in the end, we're left with the question, how do we actually solve these things? I mean, can we solve any of these interesting problems? What happens if instead of these little tiny matrices, we get matrices with, uh, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of rows and columns? What do we do? Well, there is a systematic approach to this. This is the subject of numerical linear algebra. Super useful. It's kind of outside the bounds of this course, but our next step will be to show how to solve reasonably sized systems of linear equations.